Hello friends! I have been home from vacation for less than an hour, but I have not really been in the Bible. I didn't bring one with me on my trip because I just carried a carry-on. I went to go visit my best friend. So as soon as I got home, I was really eager to get back into the Word of God, to get back into the Bible. So I'm really happy to have you join me. We're going to be reading Leviticus chapter 9 and 10. Um, let's bow our heads in prayer. Uh, you can skip through this if you want to or pause it and spend some quiet time with God on your own, whatever is best for you, and then we'll jump into Leviticus. Father God, thank you so much for how wonderful you are. Thank you so much for your word. Thank you so much that we have the ability to come to you through your word, to come to know you in a mighty way. And thank you so much for your constant fellowship, the presence of the, your Holy Spirit in our hearts. Uh, please protect our hearts and our minds our lives from sin, from worldly and fleshly desires. Help us to come to know you and live for you in a very mighty way. Help us to know your love, your grace, your mercy, and generosity and kindness. Let this word come alive in our life and the Holy Spirit to dwell inside of us. And for those who are new to you, as I feel like I'm new to you, help us to know you better, to understand you better, to have a real relationship with you, to get rid of our selfishness and our sin nature by being full of the Holy Spirit and loving one another as you want us to love one another. We are all far from perfect and you love us anyway. Help us to show loving kindness to others like you love us. Um, it is in Jesus' most mighty and precious name that I pray. Amen. So, thank you so much. Sometimes it's hard to bring a Bible, and I did have one on my phone, so I did read a little bit. I spent more time thinking about my testimony and how God has moved in my life, how God is growing in my life, how having a relationship with Him is what's transforming me to be a child of God. And I know I'm a child of God, but I want to continue to let down my will and my desires as I draw closer to him and what he wants for me. So anyways, that's enough of that. Leviticus chapter 9, and I'm reading it out of the NLT Application Study Bible. Um, read whatever version you have. The priests begin their work. After the ordination ceremony on the eighth day, Moses called together Aaron and his sons and the elders of Israel. He said to Aaron, take a young bull for a sin offering and a ram for a burnt offering, both without defects and present them to the Lord. Then tell the Israelites, take a male goat for a sin offering and take a calf and a lamb, both a year old and without defects, for a burnt offering. Also take a bull and a ram for a peace offering and flour moistened with olive oil for a grain offering. Present all these offerings to the Lord because the Lord will appear to you today. So the people presented all these things at the entrance of the tabernacle just as Moses had commanded. Then the whole community came forward and stood before the Lord. And Moses said, This is what the Lord has commanded you to do, so that the glory of the Lord may appear to you. Then Moses said to Aaron, Come to the altar and sacrifice your sin offering and your burnt offering to purify yourself and the people. Then present the offerings of the people to purify them, making them right with the Lord, just as he has commanded. So Aaron went to the altar and slaughtered the calf as a sin offering for himself. His sons brought him the blood, and he dipped his finger in it and put it on the horns of the altar. He poured out the rest of the blood at the base of the altar. Then he burned on the altar the fat, the kidneys, and the long lobe of the liver from the sin offering, just as the Lord had commanded. Then the meat and the hide, however, he burnt outside the camp. Next, Aaron slaughtered the animal for a burnt offering. His sons brought him the blood and splattered it against all the sides of the altar. Then they handed him each piece of the burnt offering, including the head, and he burned them on the altar. Then he washed the internal organs in the legs and burned them on the altar along with the rest of the burnt offering. Next, Aaron presented the offering of the people. He slaughtered the people's goat and presented it as an offering for their sin, just as he had first done with the offering of his own sin. Then he presented the burnt offering and sacrificed it in the prescribed way. He also presented the grain offering, burning a handful of the flour mixture on the altar, in addition to the regular burnt offering for the morning. Then Aaron slaughtered the bull and the ram for the people's peace offering. His sons brought him the blood, and he splattered against all the sides of the altar. Then he took the 
fat of the bull and the ram, the fat of the broad tail and from the internal organs, along with the kidneys and the long lobes of the livers, he placed these fat portions on top of the breasts of these animals and burned them on the altar. Aaron then lifted up the breasts and right thighs as a special offering to the Lord, just as Moses had commanded. After that, Aaron raised his hands towards the people and blessed them. Then after presenting the sin offering, the burnt offering, and the peace offering, he stepped down from the altar. Then Moses and Aaron went into the tabernacle, and when they came back out, they blessed the people again. And the glory of the Lord appeared to the whole community. Fire blazed forth from the Lord's presence and consumed the burnt offering and the fat on the altar. When the people saw this, they shouted with joy and fell face down on the ground. Chapter 10 of Leviticus, the sin of Nadab and Abihu. Aaron's sons, Nadab and Abihu, put coals of fire in their incense burners and sp sprinkled incense over them. In this way, they disobeyed the Lord by burning before him the wrong kind of fire, different than what he had commanded. So fire blazed forth from the Lord's presence and burned them up. And they died there before the Lord. Whew. Then Moses said to Aaron, This is what the Lord meant when he said, I will display my holiness through those who come near me. I will display my glory before all the people. And Aaron was silent. Then Moses called for Mishael and Elzaphan, Aaron's cousins, the sons of Aaron's uncle Uziel. He said to them, Come forward and carry away the bodies of your relatives from in front of the sanctuary to a place outside the camp. So they came forward and picked up their garments and carried them out of the camp, just as Moses had commanded. Then Moses said to Aaron and his sons, Eleazar and Ithamar, Do not show grief by leaving your hair uncombed or by tearing your clothes. If you do, you will die, and the Lord's anger will strike the whole community of Israel. However, the rest of the Israelites, your relatives, may mourn because of the Lord's fiery destruction of Nadab and Abihu. But you must not leave the entrance of the tabernacle, or you will die, for you have been anointed with the Lord's anointing oil. So they did as Moses commanded. Then the Lord said to Aaron, You and your descendants must never drink wine or any other alcoholic drink before going to the tabernacle. If you do, you will die. This is a permanent law for you, and it must be observed from generation to generation. You must distinguish between what is sacred and what is common, between what is ceremonially unclean and what is clean. And you must teach the Israelites all the decrees that the Lord has given them through Moses. Then Moses said to Aaron and his remaining sons, Eleazar and Ithamar, Take what is left of the grain offering after a portion has been presented as a special gift to the Lord, and eat it beside the altar. Make sure it contains no yeast, for it is most holy. You must eat it in a sacred place, for it has been given to you and your descendants as your portion of the special gifts presented to the Lord. These are the commands I have been given, but the breast and thigh that were lifted up as a special offering may be eaten in any place that is ceremonially clean. These parts have been given to you and your descendants as your portion of the peace offering presented to the people of Israel. You must lift up the thigh and breast as a special offering to the Lord along with the fat of the special gifts. These parts will belong to you and your descendants as your permanent right, just as the Lord has commanded. Moses then asked them what had happened to the goat of the sin offering. When he discovered it had been burned up, he became very angry. Woo-wee! with Eleazar and Ithamar, Aaron's remaining sons. Why didn't you eat the sin offering in the sacred area? He demanded, it is a holy offering. The Lord has given it to you to remove the guilt of the community and to purify the people, making them right with the Lord. Since the animal's blood was not brought into the holy place, you should have eaten the meat in the sacred area as I ordered you. Then Aaron answered Moses, Today my sons presented both their sin offering and their burnt offering to the Lord, and yet this tragedy has happened to me. If I had eaten the people's sin offering on, the such, on such a tragic day as this, would the Lord have been pleased? And when Moses heard this, he was satisfied. Amen. In chapter 11, we'll have to wait. But you see that in this Leviticus 
chapter 10, verse 20. And when Moses heard this, he was satisfied because Aaron had it on his heart to please the Lord. I think so often it is about the heart behind the action. But when you love someone, you want to do what pleases them. When you love someone, you want to do what pleases them, but you also want to do what's best for them. If you have a child that doesn't know how to be safe with a knife, you're not going to let the child run around with a knife. I think God gives us instructions because he knows what's best for us. And in Leviticus, God is speaking directly to Moses. And a lot of it's redundant, repetitive, but it proves that this word is sacred and holy. And it's proving that Moses spoke, God spoke to Moses, and Moses wanted an accurate depiction of the things that God was saying and his commandments that he was giving the people about how worship should go. And it's something very precious to us now who have the right and the ability to praise Jesus, that we can just praise him and worship him and love him wherever we're at and without all of these um, technicalities. But there's still something beneficial for us to read in this because we see how important washing ourselves of sin is, holiness, righteousness, coming to God, working on renewing your life with him, the seriousness of sin, and the value and importance of worship. So some of that's just my two cents, and I don't always want to give that, but I've not been able to dive into the word much lately, and even Leviticus is full of treasures for us to love and enjoy, because in Timothy it says that all scripture is breathed by God and profitable to us. So thank you for reading Leviticus with me, and I hope to see you very soon.